Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and we're going to start on another journal. And I have this old cover here, but I don't like that red on it, and I don't want that red to show through my fabric, because this is the fabric that I'm going to use. And this fabric is from Betty, and I will link it below. I love, love, love this color in here. And then I'm using a couple of her collections, too, and I will also link them below. It's got the teals and the pinks and all of that in there. I've already got everything cut out and ready to go, but I wanted to cover this with some gesso so that it won't show through my fabric. So I was just going to take you guys along with me. We'll do as much as we can on here. We may not get the signatures stitched in, but we'll do whatever we can. And then you guys can see what my process is. Now this is um, white gesso. And I'm going to put a little bit in here, and I'm going to add a little water to it because mine is pretty thick. And I don't want it quite that thick. I want it a little bit thinner, not much. So I'm just going to add a little water. And then I'll stir it up. Stir it up. You don't want to hear me sing. You really, really don't. <laughs> So what are you guys doing today? How is everybody? I hope you're well. I hope you're not sick. Poor Aaron had to go to the doctor this morning and he has strep throat. I think that's it's the time of year that it's going around. So now that this little thing right here is just something I saved. This was actually had some Tim Holtz um what is this stuff called? That in it. <laughs> Photo strips in it. And I saved some of these because I thought, well, that's a good little palette there. You know me. I'm saving everything. All right. So put that there. And I'm just going to dip in. And Now, it doesn't have to be like a perfect cover. It just needs to be something that will cover that red up. And I might put two coats. I don't know. This is our nonstick craft mat. And mine has been well loved. But they last forever. So this is an easy process. Anybody can do this one. And I'm just using a regular brush. You could use, you know, one of your little Teflon brushes if you wanted to. I mean, all of this will be covered with fabric and lace and things, but I just wanted to give it a little coat to just kind of knock that red back because I didn't want to see that through my fabric. And there was some real gummy sticky right there, so I know the paint's going to gum up there, but that's okay because it's going to be covered. So we did manage yesterday to get everybody's e-club kits out. The boxes came in yesterday about lunchtime, and we just we started putting them in there and getting them out the door. So I was glad that that happened. That's they were still a couple of days late, but I know you guys understand that. Okay, I'm going to let that dry just a minute, and I can dry it with my heat gun if I wanted to. And then I'm going to go around the edges where that other red is. Okay, we've got that coat on there, and it's dry. And I'm going to go ahead and go around the edges. Right. And then we're going to go on the inside here, even though, like I said, a lot of this is going to be covered, but if I'm using a lightweight lace, I don't want this to show through. Okay. 
All right, we've got everything covered. I may go over the front one more time, but I'll let you see if I do. Okay, as you can see, the spine needs to be reinforced. So I have got this piece of fabric and I have no clue what kind it is. I don't know my fabric. <laughs> All I know is it's like a canvas. It's really thick and uh, tough. I'm gonna use my PVA glue to put this down. If you don't have PVA glue, you can use whatever glue works for you. Um, oh, I had water on that for some reason. Somebody said that the white glue was just like PVA glue, like the white school glue. I don't know. I've never used it for something like this. I don't know why that little thing has got water in it. Let's lay that one aside and grab another one. I don't want water in it in this because I don't want to water it down. Probably when I washed it, I didn't turn it upside down and let it drain. That's That could be a thing. Okay, I'm going to put some more here since I did get that watered down and I didn't mean to. And these are just those little silicone spreaders. We have these in the store. They're like this though. They're a little bit bigger. That's one and then, hmm, well, I don't know where my other one is, but there's two to a set. Okay, we're gonna take this fabric, put it down here. I'm just going to wipe that off on it. It won't, it won't matter. Then I'll take my bone folder and smooth everything out. And I make sure that it goes down in that little crack or the little crease in the spine. Make sure that that fabric goes down in there. This is not going to be a hidden spine, but when I stitch my signatures in on the outside, I will be putting lace over that so you won't be able to see where it was stitched in. Okay. So that's on there well. All right, we'll let that dry. And now this mat, all I have to do is take it, I take it and put it in my sink, take my little scrubber, put some soap and water on it, scrub it right off. All of that comes off of it. All right, we're going to let this dry and then we'll be back to stitch the signatures in when this gets dry. Okay, we're going to work on the pages while that cover dries and I have separated these out. I think it's like 14 for each signature. And then I just pulled out some different papers. This is some Florentine paper that I purchased off of Etsy. If I can remember, I'll leave that link below. Now this is gonna be a little taller than my signatures, but I don't think it's gonna be too tall for the cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it. And if it is, I can trim things off later. So I've got two, one for each signature. And then these are some um, digitals that I printed off and if I can remember where I got these I'll link them below. Now the back is uh, the back is white and I really didn't want to put white on there. But I'm going to go ahead and fold them but I may go back and print on the back. I usually print those on a like a craft cardstock but for some reason I didn't on that one. This one I did. I printed on kind of a but you, you don't have to cover the back. You can always just put some, you know, decorate the back or put pockets on it or put book page back there. You can do different things. You do not have to print on the back. But I like to most of the time. Sometimes I'll leave it and I'll um, take a stencil and I'll stencil on the back. But... I don't know about these, what I'll do, but right now I'm just going to go ahead and fold them like I was going to put them in there. And then I can always 
print later if I need to. Now I'm just tearing the edges off of that because it was, it had a lot of white around it and I'll probably need to tear off this too. Let's go ahead and just do it while we're at it. I have a uh, craft color paper that I like to print on and then it does, you can't tell that, you know, the back doesn't look white, but I didn't do it this time. Now this is some rag paper that I got from Rachel, Roxy Creations, and it is like four sheets together here. And this is the, the genuine rag paper, so I am going to this is the only rag paper I have, so I'm going to put it in this journal, and it's not going to tear well, so I'm going to cut it. This is very strong stuff. So one of them will go in that one, and one of them will go in that one. This is some more vintage book page from Rachel that I purchased a few years ago. Now it's been. I purchased one of her bundles. I'm going to put that in there. Same thing, more from Rachel. It's just smaller. And it's in, um, I guess, Italian. I don't know. I can't read it, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's foreign, is all I know. These are some pages from Triple V Vintage that I'm going to put in there. And then I've got this piece of handmade paper and let's see I guess I'll put that in there and then this is going to be a small one there you go in there this is some of that 1859 paper that I got from uh, Katie so I'm going to put one in each signature I'm going to end up with about 20, I think, about 20 sheets in each signature. Right, and then this is some straw paper that I got from Rachel as well. And I know this is going to be too wide, but I think I'll go ahead and fold it, and then I'll just fold it back and make some side tucks with it. I love straw paper. Okay, all right. So we basically got our signatures ready here. That is one of them. And there's the other one. Now we need to kind of start putting things together. So I'm just going to put my solid paper. Book pages. One thing. Okay. I think I want this on the front. It just says I'm not perfect, but I'm unique. And that, isn't that the truth? <laughs> oh, me. I am definitely not perfect, but I'm pretty unique. <laughs> oh, me. I'm going to put that there. And you see, this will have to fold over, and that's fine. I don't mind that at all. And then we'll bring another piece of this in. And I have printed on the backs of these. And, oh, I like that with that. This is just, I'm going random here, just whatever I'm seeing at the moment. Let's see. I kind of like that in there with that blue showing there. So let's put that Florentine paper there. I'm going to go ahead and put another piece in here. Love that. Then we'll put a book page. And you guys know there's no rhyme or reason what I do. I kind of just look at it, and if it looks good, I do it. I don't spend, you know, I don't sit and dwell over it and go, oh, I don't know if that's going to look good or not. <laughs> I, I just don't do that. I, I kind of look at it, and if it looks good together, like I like those two together, then that's what I do. Then I think, now I'm going to do another digital. And then I'll do a straw paper. Oops. Come on now. Here we go. And that one I know will have to be folded, and that's okay. Now I'm going to do that butterfly. See, I like that in there together. 
All right, and then we'll do our coffee dyed page, I think. No, I think not, because that's got the same basic things as that. You see, I'm, I'm fussing a little bit more now than I normally do. I normally don't fuss this much. But just trying to show you what my process is. And I, my process is always changing. It's never the same. Never, ever. I just think if I go back and flip through them and they look good to me, then I am ready to go. I kind of like that with that. So we'll put that there. Now that one. And I have got a lot more. Um, let's see. So we'll go through that. Yeah. I've got a lot more digitals than I thought, so we may go back and insert some, or I may save some for tags. I don't know. Let's see what we shall do. I might save those two for tags, and I'm going to let this one be the center, but I'm going to fold it, I think. No, I'm not. I'm going to let this be the center. So that'll be my center signature right there. So that's number one. And like I said, these will either be folded back or trimmed or something. They'll all work when I finish them. I just don't want to cut anything off right now because I like I like the way that looks together. So let's just take a clip and clip that one. That'll be one signature. And then on the back we have this, so we kind of need to see what's going to work with that. You know, on that one I didn't look at the back and I actually put both sheets back to back and that one of them was just a little bit lighter than the other when I put my signatures together. And that, that was just, see I, I did something like that. <laughs> Just because I didn't look. All right, let's see. What shall we put here? Um, I'm just looking for one that will kind of go with that, but not, not match it, if you know what I mean. Oh, I kind of like that one. So how that go? I think so. Just didn't want one with a big rose on it like that one has. Okay, let's go with that. So this will be the first page of our second signature. So I'm going to open that, and I think I'm just going to put a book page in here. And then let's go ahead and put... I'm going to put this blue one in there. And then we've got some dark color here. So let's go ahead and put our Florentine paper there. Then we can bring that one in. I think I'll put one of these next to that. And, and most of you guys already know how to do this, and you do it in your, at your own pace and the way you like it, and that's fine. If you don't want to watch this, you can just skip right on through. Okay, let's put that there. Uh, I think I'm going to put my little piece of handmade paper there. Yeah, that one there. Let's go with that one. And then another piece of vintage book page. I'm looking for one that doesn't have brown on the inside. There we go. Just a just to bring that color out. I like that with that. Now, like I said, I may go back and print on the back of those. So right now, I'm just using them like they are. That got a little bit wet. That's okay. Uh, we'll put that there, I think. 
put our rag paper there. That one there. And let's see. I think I'll put this one next to that one. And maybe this one for our center. There we go. And I'm going to save these and make um, tags and things out of them. They don't, don't, you don't have to have the same amount in each signature, but I think I do. Maybe one less. I don't know. But it'll work. Okay. So there's signature two. There's signature one. So that is my signatures made. All right, so I'll go through now and decide if I want to fold these back or trim them off. I think I'm going to fold that one back. And I don't measure to see if they're exactly the size that they need to be. That doesn't, that doesn't bother me at all. I think, I think I'll fold this one back the other way. It's Florentine paper. Make a little, because I definitely don't want to cut that off. I like that. I don't want to waste that. That stuff's not cheap. Okay. Then we've got this paper. And again, I'm just going to make a little side tuck. That. Now you can trim all yours off even if you want. I don't stress about that stuff either. All those are good. Put a little tuck here. Doesn't have to be big. You can just put a little tuck in there. Okay, and then this Florentine, we need to fold it over. That, that, and that. Okay, that should make it fit together much, much better. All right, now I don't worry about these being at different lengths because when I put all this together and put my pockets in it and all that, you're not going to know that anyway. So I do not trim any of that off. If it really sticks out a lot, I'll fold it back. But if it doesn't, I just go with it. And that's good for me right there. All right, we'll go ahead and do this one. All right, that one looks easy. Went fast. There wasn't that much in that one. All right, so my two signatures are ready to be stitched in as soon as I get my cover dry. Hold on, let me look at my cover. All right, the cover is basically dry, and that's that's good enough that you're not going to see through that fabric and see that red. Put that on there. See? It's going to be very, very pretty. So that's going to be the fabric we put on. Now, this one is really big enough for three signatures. Okay, we're not going to put three. We're just going to put two very big ones. Okay, our spine is dry. And I am going to go ahead and stitch my signatures in. And then I can cover all of this afterwards. That, that way all of my string will be covered. Because I'm going to put lace and fabric on the outside. Now, all I have done is took my... Tim Holtz ruler that has the center zero on there and I have just marked it out so that I know where my center is and then I came out a half an inch on each side of my center to put my holes. Now I'm going to take my pencil and draw down through here where these holes are or where I marked that just so that I, when I start poking my holes I'll know where that is. There's my center right there and then I'm going to come from that center point I'm going to come up three inches and I'm going to put a mark on that side and then I'm going to come up three inches 
We'll put a mark over here. Now you can do a template and do all of this if you want. I am just going to do it this way. All my stitches is going to be hidden on the outside, so it does not have to be perfect. Okay, then for my center point, I'm going to go down three. And for my center point, I'm going to go down three. Okay, I hope you can see that. And that's why I marked my center point. Got these lines so I know where to put my holes. So there it is, all marked out. Now my signatures are going to cover this, so, and if they don't, this is just pencil, I can rub it out, so. Okay, I'm going to use my Big Bite to punch the holes in here. You don't have to have one, you can just use your little piercing tool. You can use your awl if you want. I will use my awl on the signatures, but not on this because it's going through quite a bit of stuff, so. I'm going to go down here and find my center one, punch it first, okay, oops, then I'm going to turn it around. I punch this one. Okay, and you can see how old my big body is. I mean, it's rusty. It is old, old, but it still works great. So there are my holes punched. Okay, now we're going to punch our holes in our signatures. And I'm going to use my ease binding tool for that. I have already clipped them together. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler and I'm going to find my center of all of these. Let's see. Looks like it's right there. I'm going to mark that center and then I'm going to come out three inches. Mark that one and go down three inches and mark that one. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing here. And I got these big clips. I know you're going to ask. I got them off of Amazon and I will link those below. I love them to hold my pages together. Been using them for a while now. Okay. That looks about right. So we're going to put a little dot there. Three inches of dot and then down three inches a dot. Okay. Now I'm going to put it in my binding tool and I am just going to center it up. I can see my hole on here where, I, where the punch center is and then I can see that so I'm just going to punch right down through there. And as you can see, I think there my little all is right down through there. And then I'm going to go up here to this one. And then down here to this one. And I just kind of hold it in there. You can clip it on there if you want. This is thin enough wood that you can clip it. We do have more of these in stock. Uh, we had run out, but we do have more. Benji made quite a few more, so they're back in stock again. All right, there. And see, when you push down with this mining tool, the pages automatically go down in there. So everything is squished together at the bottom. Okay. I don't know how to explain that other than saying that. <laughs> They're squished together. All right, I'm going to lay that over there. I'm going to bring this back in. And this is our back signature and make sure that your pages are the right way up and I think I've checked all of them just gonna flip through them again okay so I'm gonna put my back signature in first okay that's the front of my book and I'm using just white thread and I don't cut it off of the roll I'm gonna go in through the middle 
right down through that center hole. I'm gonna come back up to that top hole. And then right up through there. Go down all the way down to the bottom. And then go back out that bottom hole. And then I'm gonna come back through the center again. And just make sure that you don't, hopefully I didn't have my head in the shot, just make sure you don't split that thread when you come back through the center. Maybe I didn't have my head in the shot. Okay, I'm just feeling around with my needle to find my center. You can clip this on your book cover if you want. It makes it a little bit easier. I don't take the time to do that. There we go. Okay, now we're going to make sure that we got the outside pretty good. Looks like we do. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And I'll leave mine long because I like to put charms on mine, but you don't have to. You can cut them off short. I'm just going to pull that good and tight. This is our waxed thread. We do sell in the store. I love the wax thread because once you tie that stuff, it is there. And I make sure that my tails are on either side of that string that goes down. So I've got it tied down tight on both ends. Okay. So that one, that is done. Right now we're ready to put our first one in. And again, like I said, you can clip these on here if you want. I don't because, I don't know, I just don't. <laughs> but you can clip them on if you want to. Don't have to feel around for it. It makes it a little bit easier, but sometimes I clip them on and then I still have to feel around for the hole, but that's fine. All right. Through the center, out through there, back up through here, and then just straight in there. And then all the way down to the bottom. And then back out that hole there. Okay, and then we're going to go back up through the center. There we go. Now, I'm just making sure that my threads are on opposite sides of that string going down through the middle. And one's over here, one's over there. I always look at the outside just to make sure that I haven't caught anything in there. One time I actually caught some material in there <laughs> that I had laying on my desk. So that made it a little bit difficult, and I didn't look, so I've got to the point where now I look every time. Pull it nice and tight. and then tie it down tight. Now I'll just do a double knot. All right, there are our signatures in that journal. So there's our first page. I love that with that. That's pretty. Just go through and make sure before we put our fabric on the outside, we'll make sure that everything looks good. And this one will be ready to decorate. Now, I didn't go ahead on some of these. I didn't go ahead and print on the back. But I will just use my stencils and different things and put some things on the back of those. Love the feel of that rag paper. And that's all I've got. Rachel, i got to buy some more rag paper. Okay. That looks good. See, I didn't print on there, but I can collage that or something. That's not a problem. Now, I've got kind of a wide space through here. That's fine. I will fill this up. And I can take my eraser and erase those pieces. 
of those pencil marks. So I've got plenty of room to expand. All right, they all look pretty good. You see, I've got room back here too. Like I said, you could have put three signatures in here, but I'm just gonna put two very fat ones. All right, this journal will be ready now for our cover on the outside, our lace, and then to decorate the inside, and then put our covers on front and back. All right, guys, we will do that in the next video, or the next videos. Not sure it'll be the very next one. We will talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.